One. Will Rogers said that the only time people disliked gossip was when the gossip was about them. Two. To quote George Bernard Shaw, the things most people want to know about are usually none of their business. Three. There's a Spanish proverb that says, whoever gossips to you will gossip about you. Four. Benjamin Franklin once said, to find out people's faults, praise them to their friends. Five. Bertrand Russell said, no one gossips about other people's secret virtues. Six. Someone once said that trying to squash a rumor was like trying to unring a bell. Seven. Eleanor Roosevelt said, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. Eight. Oscar Wilde said that there was only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that was not being talked about. Nine. If everyone knew what others said about him, there would not be four friends in the world. A French mathematician named Blaise Pascal said that. 10. In an interview I saw recently, a celebrity asked if it was possible for a famous person to live without hearing rumors about himself. 11. Someone once said that a gossip is one who talks to you about others, a bore is one who talks to you about himself, and a brilliant conversationalist is one who talks to you about yourself. 12. I read an interview with a famous celebrity. He said that he thought that the hardest part about being a teenager wasn't dealing with the gossip in the scandal magazines, but dealing with the criticism, ridicule, and gossip of other teenagers. Hello? Anna, I'm so glad I found you. You'll never believe what I just heard. Ella and Susan had a huge argument and split up. Again? That's a real on-again, off-again friendship. Yes, but this time I hear it's for good. What happened? Rumor has it that Ella told Susan she was tired of her talking about herself and her problems and never wanting to listen to her. But the real reason was that she was really upset because she found out that Susan had been talking about her behind her back. But 
she hadn't, had she? No, but Stacy told Ella that she had heard Susan talking about her. I thought Stacy was supposed to be Susan's friend. What a backstabber. Why would she badmouth Susan like that? Isn't it obvious? She said it because she wants to become Ella's friend. But that'll never happen because we'll set things right. We will? How are we going to do that? We're going to talk to Ella and tell her that Stacy was lying. And we'll do it in front of Stacy. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. You're better at this sort of thing. I hate confrontation. But we need to confront Stacy with this. If we don't, she'll do it again. And it's not right for Ella and Susan to fall out over a lie. They'd have gotten over that other issue about listening to each other, but not this. Would you forgive me if you found out I had talked about you behind your back? Absolutely not. Have you? Anna, this is not about us. It's about Ella and Susan. They've been friends since kindergarten. Well, so have we. Okay, okay, let's do it. Great. I'll call you back later with more details. Mike, did you hear what happened with Matt and Jake yesterday? No, Ryan. What? They got into a lot of trouble. Apparently, they were driving their father's car and crashed into a delivery van that was parked near the school. Was anyone hurt? Yes. Matt hurt his arm, and Jake hit his head on the dashboard. I saw an ambulance that was on the way there and two police cars with sirens on. Wow. So what do you think is going to happen? Someone said that they heard the police say that Matt and Jake were going to be hospitalized for at least a week, and their father is going to send them off to a boarding school to keep them out of trouble. Wow. Isn't that a bit harsh? Yeah. Don't tell anyone what I told you. I won't. Hey, Saeed. Did you hear the news about Matt and Jake? No. What's going on? Well, yesterday, Ryan saw them crash into a van. They were both badly injured. They had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance. I can't believe it. I know Matt. He is a friend of mine. He is a good driver. What can I say? I'm just telling you the facts. That must be why I didn't see Matt after school yesterday. Hey, Matt. What are you doing here? I heard about all the trouble you got into yesterday. What are you talking about? I heard about Ryan seeing you and Jake crash into a van. He said you had been injured pretty badly and would have to spend a long time in the hospital. Don't you know that expression, don't believe everything you hear? Huh? But didn't all that happen? Yes, but it was all a hoax set up by our father to scare us into being more careful. It was also filmed as part of a series on sensible driving for young drivers. The police were involved, too, to make it look more real. A hoax? Yes, Saeed, a hoax. Jake and I believed it for a while until we saw our dad standing nearby, filming and watching, along with the police and the paramedics. But I tell you, it did the trick. I will think twice before speeding or anything like that. Make-believe was enough to drive the message home for good. One, what do you think is going to happen? Two, what's going on? Three, isn't that a bit harsh? Four, what are you talking about? 
five. Didn't all that happen? One. What do you think is going to happen? Two. What's going on? Three. Isn't that a bit harsh? Four. What are you talking about? Five. Didn't all that happen? Pass it on. Why we gossip? Almost everyone has indulged in gossiping about other people at some time. Gossiping seems to be part of human nature. Gossip is spread in classrooms, in offices, at restaurants, in hallways, on the street, over the phone, and on the internet. No one is immune to gossiping or being gossiped about. But just why is it that people gossip? There are many reasons people gossip. Some people gossip because it makes them feel like they are part of a group. The people spreading the gossip feel like they are in on a secret and that they are accepted by the people listening to the gossip. By excluding the person they are gossiping about, the gossipers feel included. David Jardell has experienced this firsthand. David recalls, when I first graduated from college, I was hired along with a few other graduates to be an assistant at a news station. It was a really competitive job, and at first, it was difficult to make friends. We worked long hours and weren't paid very much. We were all really struggling. Or at least that's what I thought. But one day, I overheard one of the other assistants, Rick, on the phone with his father. He asked his father if he could send more money to cover his rent. He also asked him whether he could increase the limit on the credit card he had given him. I got the feeling from the conversation that his parents were basically supporting him. I ended up gossiping about it to the other assistants. I knew I was wrong to do it, but at the time, I couldn't resist. We all had a good laugh about it, and it helped us bond as a group but there was a price to be paid for that, and Rick paid it. We used to tease him quite a bit. For example, if we were ordering a pizza, we would say, oh, Rick, wouldn't you prefer to have a nice meal at a restaurant and charge it to your daddy? We meant it in good fun, but looking back, I can see how it might have seemed malicious to Rick. He ended up quitting. I always felt bad about the part I played in his decision to leave. Other common causes of gossip are insecurity and a need to feel superior. When you spread rumors about someone, it reduces that person's status in other people's eyes. Judging other people negatively can make insecure people feel better about themselves, at least temporarily. Jim Lyle recalls having been guilty of this himself. When I had been at my first job for about a year, I was hoping for a promotion, Instead, they hired a new guy for the job that I had wanted. About six months later, a friend who worked in human resources told me that the new guy had been given a really bad performance review. My friend said that if his performance didn't improve, he would be in danger of being fired. I knew that this was confidential information, but each time I was having a conversation with someone in the office, I somehow found myself gossiping about it. Gossiping also made Jim feel powerful, important, and like the center of attention, at least for the few minutes it took to divulge the gossip. However, Jim adds, his performance improved, and he's very good at his job now. Also, I've gotten to know him, and he's really a nice person. Now I'm always worried someone will tell him that I used to gossip about him.
Interestingly, though, the number one reason most young people gossip is not insecurity or a need for attention or acceptance. According to polls, most young people say they gossip out of boredom. Some people feel that when there is no conflict or drama in their social circle, life is too dull. For them, spreading rumors shakes things up and makes life more interesting. In essence, for many people, gossip is a form of entertainment. Cindy Lamott, a 19-year-old student at a community college, admits to being a big gossiper. Explains Cindy, The truth is too boring. Gossip is fun, though I don't know whether I'd feel that way if the gossip was about me. However, for all its potential to do harm, gossip is not always a negative thing. Some gossip is harmless talk that is part of how people communicate and stay connected with each other. When people gossip about minor things, gossip can strengthen bonds between people and within a community. The issue isn't so much with gossip itself, but with the content of the gossip. Gossip becomes a problem when it is derogatory and hurtful. So the next time you hear a piece of gossip and feel the urge to pass it on, stop for a moment. Ask yourself whether the gossip will do harm to the person being gossiped about. If you think it might, it's a good time to keep your mouth closed. Why Gossip is Boring I hate gossip. I find it boring and destructive. Yet so much in the media, in publications, and on the web is based on gossip. A lot of people have become so heavily conditioned to it that they fail to recognize it as gossip. They regard it as news, information for public consumption. I met an older friend that I had not seen for some time, she proceeded to tell me all the news about people I knew and people that I had never heard of. None of it was harmful on its own, but it was infinitely boring and awkward. I honestly felt I was wasting my time and hers for no obvious reason. I also became very reluctant to share any of my news because I felt that it would very likely become public property. At some point, she realized that I was not engaged in the conversation and attributed my attitude to my obsession with work. So she started lecturing me on the negative effects of not having some normal time off. She then told me about someone else who carried on like me, someone I knew, and how sick she had gotten through overwork that she had been hospitalized for about four months. I started feeling physically sick. What right does anyone have to upset someone to such an extent that they become sick? Why is it that disaster draws so much attention? Why doesn't anyone tell stories or spread rumors about good days, successful endeavors, and happy people? Imminent calamity seems to sell a lot better than a happy development. The trend has established itself quite well. Most news items are about threats, criminal behavior, destruction, bankruptcy, war, etc. The more dismal the news is, the larger the audience, the higher the ratings, and the more successful the program is. Mind your own business is considered rude and aggressive. If you dare utter these words, you are summarily dismissed as selfish, insensitive, and ungrateful. Somehow, making others' business your own has become the norm rather than the exception. But I would still say it and take the risk in order to preserve some peace of mind and do my duty in a small way. Reminding those who care to be reminded that we all have a right to privacy, 
without being considered peculiar.